Okay, so today we're going to start chapter 5, and we're going to talk about equilibrium of rigid body. What we'll get to pretty quick in chapter 5 is the concept of finding what we call support reactions. So I've drawn a generalized shape here. Um, that shape actually is sitting on top, let's say it's a log here, sometimes we'll call that a roller. Okay, so this shape could roll back and forth along this log, but it can't go down, right? The log would have to push back up on top of it. And over here, somehow we have this pin connection. So I have this thing connected to the ground, and I've got it come comes up here, and I have a pin that goes through this great big two-dimensional rigid body. All right, and I have two applied loads. I have F1 and F2 applied. And so in chapter 5, what we're going to try and find out, we're going to answer this question. What So what are the reactions at A and B. And so I've now labeled this point A and this point B. Okay, so what are we really asking? What we're saying is that we have this rigid body, right? Somebody's pulling on it, somebody's pushing down on it, but it's not moving because it's at equilibrium, right? There is no motion. So in order for it to not be moving and I'm pulling on it, let's say that's me over here pulling, something else has to be pulling back the other way, right? Well, where can that force be applied? It can be applied right over here at A, right? This pin, you can imagine if I'm pulling on this, then this pin is pushing back on this rigid body. On the other hand, if somebody's standing up here pushing down, it, if it's not going to just fall, then something has to be pushing up. And you can imagine that right here we can push up. The pin actually can push up as well. So what we have is a situation where we'd like to know how much is pushing up here and how much is pushing up here and what is the force here. So to do that we do two steps. Step one is a free body diagram except now we're not just drawing a point like we did in chapter three we're drawing the entire body. So here's a rough approximation oops let me try that again Here's a rough approximation of that shape, right? And now it's free because I haven't put any of the supports. I go ahead and I draw the forces on it. And I go ahead and draw what the reactions are. So here's the reaction at B. And here we already said there's two reactions, right? The pin could push in either direction. So here's the reaction at A in the Y direction. Here's the reaction at A in the X direction. So here's our free body diagram. Of course, we're going to put all the other stuff that we would normally put in a free body diagram. Here's X. Here's Y. If we're given any distances, right? So we might be told that this distance is one foot, etc. That would all go in this free body diagram, just like we did for particles, except now they're a little bit more complicated, right? Because we're dealing with this shape, not just a point. What's the second step? Second step, just like for particles, is going to be equations of equilibrium. So let's write the ones we would normally write for particles. We would add all the forces up in the x direction, right? So I have R ax plus f2 equals 0. I have r in the y direction. I would have ray plus rab minus f1 equals 0. So let's imagine the problem is like this. That's 5 kilonewtons. That's 10 kilonewtons. Now we look. With just that information, we only have two equations. But we have one, two, three unknowns. So we need some more equations. 
And that was all chapter 4 was about, is how to understand moments so that we can use that information to write a new equation. The other equation that we could write is that the sum of the moments at, let's say, point A also equals 0, right? So not only is this thing not moving this direction, right? It's not moving up. It's also not spinning, because if it was spinning, it wouldn't be in equilibrium. So if we add up all the moments at A, so the moment that RB causes at A, the moment that F1 causes at A, the moment F2 causes at A, why did I pick A? Because both of those create no moment at A. Right, I add all that up, I have now RB, F1, and F2, also in a nice, neat little equation. So that, that little thing is actually a function of F1, RB, and F2. Right. So now that I have that, I now have not two equations, but I have all together three equations and three unknowns. And so I can solve what we call this rigid body equilibrium problem in two dimensions. Now, in three dimensions, things get even more, well, perhaps exciting. First of all, the free body diagram is a little more complicated to draw. Second of all, just like in um, a particle equilibrium, we now have not two, but three force equations, right? So we have the sum of the forces equals zero, which we can say that's the sum of the forces in x has to equal zero, sum of the forces in y has to equal zero, and the sum of the forces in the z direction equals zero, right? So we have three equations here. Not only do we have that, we get to say that the moment, the total moment, is equal to zero. Above, we just had to worry about the moment around the point. We, since the plane was the xy plane, we knew that that moment was pointing in the z-axis or perhaps the negative z-axis. So we kind of just reduced that to dealing with the magnitude. Here we have to deal with the moment around every axis. So here we get to say the sum of the moments around the x-axis equals zero. The sum of the moments around the y-axis equals zero and the sum of the moments around the z-axis equals zero. So we have three more equations. So for a 2D problem, we have three equations, right? For a 3D problem, we're going to have six equations, right? So conceptually, we could have a three-dimensional problem where we have six unknowns and six simultaneous equations to solve for them. The key, however, is being able to draw those free body diagrams correctly. So there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. The first thing you have to keep in mind is the concept of support reactions. Support reactions. And so if you ever wonder what is the appropriate support reaction to draw, for example, right here at B, I just drew a line up, and here at a pin connection, I drew one this way and one that way you can look at your book. So in 2D, you need table 5-1 in the book. For 3D, if you'll look at table table 5-2, of course, it was the very next table, 5-2. So that's the first new thing that you're going to have to deal with, this concept of support reactions. The other thing that you're going to have to start recognizing, oops, not three, two, is body forces. So we dealt a little bit with this in two-dimensional problems. This is the weight, weight of things primarily, right? That's the one we deal with, the, the force due to gravity. All right, we'll have to learn where to apply those body forces and how to deal with them. All right, so that's really what we're going to do in Chapter 5, is we're going to draw free body diagrams. They're going to include support reactions and body forces. We're going to write equations of equilibrium. And right in here is where we're going to use our cheat that I've been talking about to write the sum of moments in x, sum of moments in y, some moments in Z when we need it directly without having to go through that cross product mess. Okay, so we'll start that uh, in class, and I think we have a couple classes scheduled um, on Chapter Five, 
and we'll just work some problems. So if you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you.